Hey everybody, this is Dream, and today we have a nice little four-game slate for Friday for college basketball here. Um, we have some good players available, um, some fairly expensive players, in fact, and we got some good value plays here for you. I think the slate overall is actually relatively decent, um, <laughs> even though we have some games in the Ivy League as well. Um, the Penn's, the Penn Cornell game is actually the highest scoring game on the slate, if you can believe it. Uh, so, uh, we have some, uh, short games, but we also have some games that I think it's going to be, um, pretty decent here. So, let's get into who I like the best in these games first. Uh, we're going to start off with, uh, with the, uh, Harvard-Brown game. I've got Harvard winning that one, though it is a two-point spread, so do keep that in mind. That's also the lowest scoring game on the slate, well, tied for the lowest scoring game on the slate with California and Stanford. Uh, for Penn and Cornell, I have Penn winning that. It's also a three-point slate uh, difference. Akron and Ball State, I have Ball State winning. That's a two-point game. And then Stanford and California, I have Stanford winning, and that is a six-point game. Or, sorry, an eight-point game. Um, so, But that is the lowest scoring game on the slate overall. And they are, uh, California is the lowest scoring team on the slate, uh, while... Penn and Cornell are the highest by over 20 points. So with that said, let's get into the players we do like today. Um, we're going to start with uh, the guards here and start with Clark Sladgert for Penn. Um, he's been uh, pretty good here for his price. Uh, he had some good potential here since he's been back from injury two games ago. He's been over 21 fantasy points or better. Um, only three games under 21 fantasy points all season long. Otherwise, uh, two games last year versus Cornell were 14.5 and 27.3. I expect him to have a solid game here. His price point is very playable on the slate. He would be considered a core play if I was going to do core plays for uh, college basketball. And so I definitely think he's somebody to, to uh, make sure to roster. Uh, then we're going to look at Tavarius, uh, sorry, Tavari Jacks, Johnson here for Akron. Um, he's almost minimum price to 3900 bucks here. Um, he's been starting the last seven games and playing quite a decent chunk of minutes. He's had some good upside here. His worst game in those starts were 9.8 fantasy points. And even if he does get 10 fantasy points, uh, that is perfectly fine for our lineup today. Um, and so I think he's a great option on the slate. Uh, make sure he is starting there for Akron, but it's a decently high scoring game for this particular slate. And so, and he's on the team that I think is going to win. I think he'll get somewhere in the 10 to 20 range in fantasy points for the most part. Uh, then we're going to look at Demarius uh, uh, Jacobs here for Ball State. And he's at 6800 bucks. He's got no games under 18 fantasy points all season long. He has four straight games over 30 fantasy points. And he has two games against Akron last season where he had 21 and 20 fantasy points. Obviously, his price point, I wish he was just slightly a little bit cheaper, but he's still fine at this price point. Uh, he has good upside, and I think he's viable on the slate. Keep in mind that this is one of the higher scoring games on the slate, so that makes him a little bit more viable as well. Uh, then we're going to look at Jaron uh, Coleman, for also for Ball State. Uh, he's just a little bit more expensive than Jacobs. He's almost identical in the aspect of he's had no games under 19 fantasy points all season long. His upside is just a little bit lower, though, than Jacobs. So if I had to choose between the two, I would choose Jacobs over Coleman. But you couldn't really go wrong with either one. I feel like both of them are going to have a solid game here. And I expect them both to play well in this game. And I expect uh, that game to be pretty close. Um, then we're going to look at Paxson Wujak. Uh, sorry for butchering your name for Brown. Now, this is a, a low-scoring game. And his price point is a little bit higher than I'd like it to be. But he's had no games under 18 fantasy points all season. And he's been pretty consistent and solid throughout the season. He's got some pretty good upside as well. But keep in mind the game is supposedly going to be pretty low scoring. And so I don't necessarily love him. But I do think he's somebody worth taking a look at. Uh, as you can see he's just been really good all year. Uh, his price is a little bit up though. So do keep that in mind. Um, and then, finally, for the guards, we're going to look at Trendon Hankerson for Akron. 
Um, now, his price point is pretty decent here at 6500 um, He's had one bad game all year in a tough matchup. They had some pretty good uh, opponents early in the season against Mississippi State and LSU. Uh, but his price point is decent enough that we can roster him here and be pretty happy. Last two games last year versus Ball State, he had 34 and 27 fantasy points. And this game should be relatively good. And I expect him to have a big game potential here. He's had a couple games this season where he really played out, uh, played good. And I expect that to be potential in this one. Um, obviously, if you had to choose between him and Jacobs, I would go a little bit more with Jacobs. But if you need to save some money, he's a good way to do so uh, on this particular slate. Um, for forwards, uh, we're going to start with uh, Peyton uh, Sparks for Ball State here. Uh, at 7400 bucks. Um, he is pretty decent option here. He's had three games under 21, fan, 21 fantasy points on the season. Uh, he had 36 and 11 last season against Akron. That's 36 fantasy points and 11 fantasy points in the two games. Not super awesome, but he has some upside here. And uh, forward is a pretty rough is pretty rough on the slate. It's hard to find a lot of good options here. So he's somebody you could take a look at. Uh, and he also averages 0. 0.91 fantasy points per game. Um, then we're going to look at Mickey Pearson Jr. Uh, for Ball State. At his price of 4700 he started the last five games, and all of those games have been over 11 fantasy points. His price point is pretty decent here for the upside and the potential. Uh, obviously, he is a little bit, you know, he's not going to be a guy that gets a ton of regular points, but he gets rebounds and uh, some steals and stuff like that as he's been starting. He's been doing pretty good. And he had a couple games this year where he had some bigger games when he was coming off the bench. So I do think he's got a lot of capability here. And this game is one of the higher scoring games on the slate, as I've said. Uh, so I do think he's got upside here, uh, especially just because he's good at rebounding and things like that. So I expect him to play well and be able to score a decent amount of fantasy points. For his price, he's definitely somebody that's viable and also a good way to save some money, especially if we try to roster the next two guys I'm going to talk, or the last two guys rather I'm going to talk about. One being Enrique uh, Freeman here for Akron at $9,000. He's averaging 1.09 fantasy points per game. He has very nice upside. He has four games versus Ball State in his career. And last year, there was two games, and those were 30 and 47 fantasy points. year before that, he scored 20 and 13 against them. Uh, so obviously, he's got some good uh, history against them. Uh, his price is obviously pretty high. But he's only had one game under 20 fantasy points all season long. He's definitely a good option on this particular slate, especially if you've got to pay up for somebody. He's definitely somebody to consider. And then uh, finally, last but not least, Chris Ledlam. Now, he does have an advantage. He can play guard as well. But honestly, uh, there's plenty of guards to choose from today. So he's a good guy to mix in at forward if you need if you want to spend up here. Um, he's also a good alternative Freeman if you don't like Freeman as much. Um, his price point is similar at $9,500, and he's averaging a ridiculous 1.19 fantasy points per game. He's been rebounding really well lately as well. As you can see, he's got a whole bunch of games at nine and nine or more rebounds. Um, he's also got 50 fantasy point upside. He has no games under 26 fantasy points all season long. Last year, he played one game against Brown where he scored 33 and a half fantasy points. The only downside here is that this is a lower scoring game, so it's a little bit risky from that perspective. But overall, I still think he's a great option on this slate. Now, I did say that was the last player, but I actually do have a what I call a wild card pick. Uh, he's just a, I've got a cheap option here uh, that probably doesn't, uh, may or may not pay off, but he is somebody to look at because he's only played two games, but he didn't play most of the season up until now. Um, and so I expect him to start in this game. Um, and uh, get some opportunity in this situation. Um, so this is uh, Dijon Clayton here for uh, California. Now, he hasn't played all season long until the last two games, uh, and so I do expect him to have some opportunity uh, to become a starter as the season goes on, and his price point right now is at 3300 bucks. In his two games he did play, he scored nine fantasy points and 14.25 in the last two um, and he just didn't shoot the ball well, but I actually think he'll probably do better. He also had five turnovers against Colorado, um, but this game against Stanford uh, is uh, supposedly a really low-scoring game, so that's a little bit risky, but honestly, at 3300 bucks, he can help you pay up for some other guys, and he's a cheap option 
that uh, you could potentially make something with. However, he is fairly risky because California is not playing very well. And uh, he has some, uh, but he does have some upside with the minutes and potentially starting. So with that said, guys, that's what I got for this situation. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Uh, thank you again for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and have a nice day.